Hi, I'm Nick Rains from Leica Camera Australia. In the previous video, I showed you how to automate the generation of masks for landscape images. In this video, I'm going to take it another step further and apply the same concept to portraits. Here's a typical head and shoulders portrait. It's almost perfectly exposed. If you look at the histogram, you'll see there's no head headroom to the right of the histogram up here. So that's pretty much nailed the exposure. But you'll see that the tones are, are all bunched up in the shadow part of the histogram. They're all over to the left. So we want to bring those tones up to the mid-tones, give the picture a bit more life. And I can do that using masks with a couple of twists. So let's go to the masking tool and you'll see that it already says person one. And if I hover my mouse over person one, you'll see the mask it's going to generate. So I'm going to generate this mask first and I'm going to go entire person and I get the hat, I get the face, I get the clothes, I get everything. Create mask, very straightforward. And let's call that body. So we know what we're looking at. Now, I often make an adjustment to the eyes separately. And if I now go and make an eye mask just for the eyes, that will sit on top of the mask for the body. And I'll make the, the, the adjustments will are not separate. Whatever I do to the overall body, what it, the adjustments I make to the eye mask will sit on top of that. They will add to it. So I want to separate them so they're completely independent. And the way I do that is I go to my body mask. I click subtract, go to select people, click on person one and choose eye sclera iris and pupil and you'll see that red werewolf look is now going to be subtracted from the mask I've just made. Create mask and now if you look carefully at the thumbnail or the overlay there you'll see those eyes are no longer included in that mask. So now I need a new mask for the eyes on their own. Click uh, eye sclera iris and pupil only and create a mask. And now I have a mask, which is just the eyes. So I've now separated the eyes from the rest of the body. Let's adjust the body first. I'm going to turn off overlay so it's easy to see. And I'm just gonna lift the overall value, but not the eyes, to something that's pleasing to my eye. Again, this is very much seat of the pants stuff. There's no right and wrong here, but I just want to make it just look more interesting and more appealing. So let's just, do that, that should be fine. I also don't want to add any clarity because clarity and skin tones do not go well. That's another reason I wanted to separate the eyes from the rest of the, the mask because I will be adding clarity to the eyes to make them sparkle and I absolutely don't wanna do that to her face. So there is the uh, suitable adjustment for the body. And then I'm going to go to my eye mask and I'm gonna turn off the overlay there and again, just by eye, haha, ha, I'm going to just boost the value. And those whites are starting to clean up. And I'm going to add some clarity, which will add a little bit of sparkle. And if I zoom right in on those eyes now, there's one other thing I need to do, and that's to add a little bit of shadow detail by lifting the shadows. And if I do that, you should see the brown of her eye pop up. Just, we don't want to overdo it. This is where the clarity slider comes in because it does tend to add, if I just go down and up, you'll see it's adding that definition. Okay, because it's only her eye, you can, you can be a bit more harsh with these controls. You certainly wouldn't do this with skin tones. Let me just turn off the eye mask and you'll see that eye now looks liquid and shiny and alive. It's so much better. If I zoom out to the uh, whole picture, turn off both marks, you'll see that really is a huge improvement. Now, of course, the whole point of this is to make things easier for you. So we're gonna automate this. And those adjustments may or may not be applicable to another portrait, but the masks definitely are. So let me find another image down in the bottom left-hand corner here. This image doesn't need as much lightning, but his eyes are just a little bit dark. So let me just come back to this first picture and save these settings now as a new preset. I've already got one on the left-hand side here, which I'm just going to remove for, this, for, the moment, for the purposes of this demonstration. Delete that. And then I need to create new preset, create preset, call it portrait. And the key thing here is to make sure none of these are checked. Might look like this, but check none. And then masking, 
Mask one I should have renamed to eyes. Anyway, we know what it means and then body, but that's what we want. Anything that's in that, those, anything that's a mask that we've already made will be listed here. Even if you've got a lot of masks, they'll all be listed here and you can choose the ones you want. You don't have to do all of them, but for this particular purpose, it makes sense to do both of these masks. Create the preset. And now if I reset this image and click on the preset, that's back to where it was before. So let's see how it works on a completely different image. Same sort of image, but a different person in a different situation with different quality light. Now this picture is a uh, better exposure. It's not so pushed down into the dark tone. So the adjustment we made to the body is probably going to be too much. But again, it's non-destructive editing. I can so quickly make that adjustment. Let us choose the portrait preset. And as expected, he's much too bright. So all I need to do is go to my body mask, pull back the slider back to normal, double click to reset it, and we'll turn off the overlay. His eye is also a little bit too bright and I can just pull that back down again, just to make it more realistic. And we are pretty much done. The masks were generated automatically. And as I hover over them, you should see that they are exactly where we want them to be because they are auto generated based on the shapes in each individual image. They're not generic and that's the key to the whole process. So basically hitting the preset gives you the masks you need and then you can override the whatever adjustments are within that preset to your heart's content. Maybe don't even make any adjustments, make the masks and then you've got some blank masks to, in a manner of speaking that you can adjust later either way. But I think it's very, very normal to boost those eyes and very, very normal to add a little bit of exposure to the face. So you can adapt this technique however you see fit, but I think you'll appreciate that if you select 10 different portraits and click the preset, you'll get masks for all of them instantly. Then you can go through quickly and make the finer tuning adjustments as you go. For me, this is a massive time saver. So I hope it has the same use for you.